uh, command line arguments in C. Uh, we're going to be learning about what the argc and the argv is in the int main here. And so in this lesson, we're going to be figuring out how many characters or strings or strings are in the executable slash arguments. Uh, we're going to be getting integer input from the command line using a2i, uh, str2l, and str2d. Uh, we're going to be getting string input from the command line, extracting numbers from a mixture of numbers and letters in the command arguments, and also extracting just the letters from a mixture there. So the header files, header files we'll be using are the standard in and out for printf, scanf, the standard library for str2l, a2i, and str2d. We're going to be using the string header file for string length, and we're going to be using the C type header file for is digit or is alpha. Uh, so str2l stands for string to long. It converts a string to a long integer. a2i stands for ASCII to integer. Converts ASCII to int. And string length checks how many characters are in a string. Is digit checks if a character is a digit. Is alpha checks if a character is a letter. And I'll be posting all this information on my blog, or all this code on my blog, so I'll post that in the link. And if you're looking for just a specific uh, portion of this video, I'll also be posting just the times of each section. So, moving along here. So, in the main, so int argc, so that stands for argument count, is the number of strings in the argument. So, for instance, if I compile this here, create an executable. And so I have here the in is my executable name, and then I have this random junk here. So this random junk and the executable file name are strings. They count as strings. So this argc uh, parameter here will be 2. And so then the argv stands for argument vector, and this is the characters that are in the strings. And so for the first portion of this, we're going to be learning how many characters or strings in the executable or how many in the argument. So what data are we pulling from these arguments? So number of strings in the command line, which I told you that was 2. So if I print that out, so we have number of strings in the command line is 2. So number of characters in the name of the file. And... Our format specifier is integer, same for up here. Uh, we're going to be using the string length uh, function, and we're going to be passing in the first spot of argv. So argv and argv0, they are the same thing. So that's just the point in the array. So the first point in the array is going to be this in, which is the execu executable name. And that length of that is 2. So that prints out the number of characters in the name of the file is 2. So then we want to know how many characters are in the first argument. We have our string length of argv1, which is our second position here. So this is all this stuff. The ASDF12, that's 13 characters long. So next up here, I'm just going to uncomment all this. And comment this real quick. So the next thing we're going to learn is how to get integer input from the command line. 
So we're going to be using string too long. So the C library, it's a C library function, and this is what it looks like: is it's a long int, string too long. Then we put in for the parameters, we have a string here, and then this double uh, star here just means it needs a pointer there, and then the base, a base, integer base. So in a base of zero means that it'll auto detect what the base is. So that's what we're going to be using. So we need to initialize or declare a uh, pointer. So I just made a character star p, just a general pointer there. So then we're going to set, we're going to initialize a long int and name it long n. And then we're going to set it equal to, and then we're going to call the function str2l. And then for our parameters, we're going to have our <coughs> string of the argument. So that would be this ASDF blah -de blah there. And then we put in our pointer. And then we have our base of zero. So it'll auto detect which base we need there. And we're just going to print that out there. And then if you want to just use an integer, you can just cast that use just declare an int variable cast the whole function to an integer and then pass in the same parameters as before and then print that out and then for double we have it's just a different library function so double str2d so st string to double so it has a string and then a pointer so initialize a double variable there and then call the function, set it equal to the function, input our argument, and then input the pointer there. And then just print that out. I'll just compile this again real quick here. And this will only accept the let or the numbers if they are first in the argument. So here we have long n equals our argument, int n equals the argument, double equals the argument. We could also do, just to show you there, so that does work. And then, okay, for the a2i or ascii2 integer function here, don't need that. So we have the C library function for A2I is looks like this. It's an int and then ASCII two integer and then it just takes in a string variable or a parameter and that converts the string argument to an integer. So I just declare I declared a int variable here and set that equal to the function with our parameter, printed it out. And then it the only difference though is that the ASCII two uh, integer does not have a double function. It does have a float function, however, so you can use the float uh, function a two f there. So then you just create a variable, set that equal to the function, set that equal or put the argument in to the function there and then print that out and as you can see it floats aren't, aren't as precise as doubles so that's why it varies there just gonna comment this out move on to the next section <clears throat> So getting a string input from the command line. So all you're going to do is you're going to create a new array and set the length of the array equal to the command line argument. So that's the size of whatever the user inputs. And then we're going to use this string copy function, which is character, and it takes in a destination array 
a source array and then the size of how many characters from the source you want to put into the destination and so our character n array here is going to take in all of the characters from the argument so that'll go into the argument or the character n array and then you have to set the last you have to make sure to do this otherwise you get uh, memory overflow and so you set the very last uh, spot in the array to the null character so make sure you do that and then you'll be able to print that out so just do that really quick compile this and then I didn't save it. There we go. Save. Now we'll compile. And char n equals whatever the user inputted. And the reason we put it into a new array is so that you can manipulate it later on. So if we wanted to set the first spot in our array to v, we can do that. So that's our first one, and then the second one after we changed it. Okay, I'm going to comment that out there a minute. And then we'll move on to extracting numbers from a mixture inside of the argument. So first thing we're going to do is create a new array set that length of that array to the user input. We're going to copy over everything from that argument into the array. We're going to set the last spot in our array to the null character. Then we're going to initialize an array size. So we're going to check out how many integers are in the array. We're going to set that this variable equal to that. We're also going to initialize a position integer. So we're going to use that for finding the position of the integers in the array. So first we're going to find the size for a new array, which we'll use later. So we're going to loop through the size of our array here. And then we're going to check if, if any of the characters in this array are numbers. So we do this by using the isDigit function, which the C library function for isDigit is just the void, then the function name, and then it takes in a parameter here of integer. And you can put in the array here as long as you have it set to the a spot in the array so it's checking each character in the array and then if that's if one of these spots in the array is a digit we're going to increase our array size uh, variable up here and so once it's done looping through that we're going to create a new character array set it to the size of however many integers are in the array here and then okay so we have that and now we're going to create another for loop go through the whole string again the whole argument I should say and we're going to check again if any of the characters in the array are integers we're going to set our new array position of 0 to that number, that spot where, so we're going to set the spot, so if the number is 2 at position 3, say, 
we're going to put that in our new array at position 0. And then we'll increase our position for our array so that in the next position we'll set the next number to that array there. So we'll loop through that, set all the numbers, get all the numbers, put them in that new array there. After that, we'll set the last spot in the array to the null character. And then we'll print out the new array. So I'll save that real quick. Clear the screen here a minute. Compile this. Create the executable. So we have maybe some letters, some numbers, letter again, maybe some numbers there. And then it prints out integers in the argument 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. Check back up here. Yep, skipped through all those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. All right, good. So then the next thing for us here is extracting just the letters from the array. So we'll uncomment this. So we'll just reuse some of our previous variables. We'll reset the array size back to zero, set the position back to zero. We're going to loop through. It's basically the same thing except we're just changing a few of the functions that we're using here. So we're looping through the, uh, the entire array again. And we're checking this time if each item or each character in the array is an alpha, alphabetical or alphabetical character. So this is the function for that. Void is alpha takes in an integer again. So we'll go through each spot in the array there. And then if that is an alphabetical character, we'll increase our array size. And after it's done with that, create a new array set it to the size of our array size here and then we'll make sure to set the very last spot in the array to null and then so we're going to loop through this again loop through the entire string again for or the argument and then if it's an alpha again checking if, if each spot in the argument is an alpha alphabetical character then again, we're just putting each character that's an alphabetical character into our new character array there. And then we're incrementing our position so that our next spot in our new character array will be the next uh, available character. And then after it's done with that, we'll just print out the new string, the new string here for you. So we'll save that. I'm going to run this, or compile it, create new executable, and we'll just reuse this one. So, integers in the argument, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, and letters in the argument, A, S, D, F, A, S. So, A, S, D, F, and then letters, and then A, S, and then letters, or numbers. So, that is going to be it for this tutorial. I realized that was a lot. I could have broken it up into a bunch of shorter videos, but again, I will be posting the uh, spots here from where you can just select each individual uh, portion in the description for you. I just wanted to do that to make it so that you didn't have to watch five different videos. So. And all this code will be posted on my blog, so you'll be able to just copy and paste it from there. And so, I hope that really helped you guys out in some way. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you until next time. Thank you.